Hi, I'm Kimberly Guerrero. Welcome to The DOS Show. This episode will feature artwork by Linda Hart and Dexterry Lazidi. There will also be a silent auction piece created by Michelle Vasquez and the music by Moosh. I'm your host for the artist sections of the Denver Art Society. Today here with me I have Dick Terry Lazidis <laughs> and we're standing here in front of my mural of the Colorado River. This is my very first mural in Colorado. I'm looking forward to doing plenty more. Um, I went to Estes Park and I did a very quick watercolor that at the time I did not know was the Colorado River. And uh, it is from that sketch that I used to map out and create this mural. And I started very, very traditionally um, after I had mapped out in a general sense the geometric forms and the direction. I started from the top and I started to very systematically work down the wall. Yes. And then when I got to the bottom, I sort of went back, did some very quick highlights, and that was as much time as I had. Um, I enjoy working with acrylics, even though I do work other mediums as well, uh, oils, pastels. I've been painting since I came out of my mother's womb, I think, <laughs> and I've tried all kinds of mediums. I enjoy acrylic though for the simple reason that it dries fast and it allows me to work fast, which I enjoy very much. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more. If you are interested in learning how to do landscapes, no matter what size, I am here at the Denver Art Society giving lessons on Wednesdays and Fridays. You can sign up on the Meetup app or downstairs in their computer and uh, hopefully I will see you on Wednesdays and Fridays from noon till closing. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Is there anything else that you wanted to tell us about uh, the mediums that you prefer to work in? Or I don't um, know. what I, got you started? What, what do hmm. you... Well, I don't know what got me started. I just started painting, literally at three years old when I locked myself in the bathroom and took my mother's cosmetics and did murals in the bathroom. And I'm sure she appreciated that. I'm doing that. the same thing again, <laughs> you know. But, um, and then I, many years in art schools and art colleges and yes, I love oil paintings, but I think what I've learned so far is the medium doesn't matter to me so much. It's more the handling it, the the craftsmanship and the artistry of showing you know your medium and how to get across whatever it is you're trying to achieve. I think that's for me probably of more priority right now than having a specific medium that I seem to fall for. I just feel that whatever is around me, I will use it. So what um, brought you to Denver Art Society? Uh, well, I found it by chance. I moved to Colorado to be near my son and um, I started to look for some kind of art connections because I was feeling very isolated in a new city and it was just word of mouth and uh, walking by, you know, uh, one of the other art galleries I walked into uh, told me about the Denver Art Society. I walked in and that was it, you know, I love it here. To me it is a gold mine, a sanctuary, a blessing for artists everywhere. I highly recommend coming here whether you're visiting or whether you want to be a member. Um, probably one of the best experiences I've ever had. Well, we're also very grateful to have you here on board along with all of the rest of our amazing Thank artists you. that we have here. It's always uh, inspirational every time that you get yes. a chance to come in. I've always felt that artists are like sharks need to feed off of each other so that we can evolve our work. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're welcome.
Thank you. Terry Lazidis and I give music lessons Wednesdays and Fridays at the Denver Art Society. You can sign up on the Meetup app or under the Denver Art Society app. Thank you very much. Bye. Cut. Now coming to you live from Denver Art Society, I have Moosh.
I'm Steve Strong. I'm here at Denver Art Society, one of my favorite art collectives in the world here in Denver, and I'm here with Linda Hart. Uh, Linda, when did you start doing art here at Denver Art Society? I started in 2012, about eight years ago. Eight years ago. What inspired you to start? I had just moved back to Denver from living in southern Colorado, and I needed a place to do my art, and I wanted a community. And I looked in Craigslist and found um, a studio offering for a good price. So I came and checked it out and joined. That's really cool. Um, what kind of art did you start doing at that time and how did it evolve? What are you doing now compared to then? Um, back then I was, I had a trainer at the gym who was from the south side of Chicago and he felt obliged to teach me all about old school hip hop. And I couldn't do anything with it. I'm not a break dancer, I'm not a, you know, rapper, but I could paint it. So I painted many, many paintings for like four years of different artists and showing that different artists painted the same way um, would look different in the art. It's abstract. That's very cool. Have you worked with any rap artists here in the Denver area? Yeah, I used to do some live shows and once I got to give KRS one one of my paintings I did of him. Oh, when he that's really cool. Stage. Yeah, that was cool. That was like way back. KRS one is a legend. He started a lot of really good hip hop, so that's cool you got to collaborate with him. Yeah, he really um, uplifts local people wherever he goes. Yeah, he does. My friend rapped with him uh, a few months ago. It was crazy. I couldn't believe the video of them on stage. Great collaboration. What was uh, your favorite media and why do you like it? I love um, acrylics. I um, have always done that, but lately I've been going into using a watercolor type effect and I'm having fun with that. Uh, what brought you to DAS and what made you become a family member? Um, I really, I had worked and lived in a really small town in the mountains. I, I wanted that again. So I found that here with only, it was exaggerated. All kinds of young artists, new artists come in daily. So you're constantly getting stimulated and inspired. So I like it for that. That's good. How do you usually sell your art? What is your main platform of selling it? Um, we display here at the Art Co-op at DAS, and we have a new show every month, so there's something new up on the wall. Um, I do festivals all over, and now I don't do uh, music, I do dreams. Oh, that's cool, with the watercolors. So, yeah, so like this right, this piece right here is an actual dream I had that I was flying through the sky and I saw bits and pieces of my art flying all around me. And I think I had that dream two years ago and I've been just obsessed with it and trying to get it right, just like it was in my head. And I think I finally did. That's really cool. So. That reminds me of the Beatles yesterday. He wrote that song in his sleep too. There's something too about writing yeah. things in their sleep. Absolutely, dreams are important. This one too. Um, up here, I think you can see it. It's um, at a time in my life, obviously, where I was feeling boxed in and wanting to like be pouring free, like all that art, that paint around it. And that was a really fun process to pour paint and let it just fly without any control. Is that the sun, or is that what is that exactly? How does this get interpreted? That was me in a box feeling my essence kind of like it's all abstract so. I see what you're saying now you're saying you're in a box before and the outside is chaos and are you safe inside the box I yeah but you're in a box so you're trapped that's interesting what inspires you what kind of uh, artist do you look up to look into um Kandinsky our abstract expressionist um Chagall I love um, Hilma off Klimt, and she, she is one that wouldn't allow her art to be shown for 40 years after her death because she didn't think it was right for the world to see it. 
And so they showed it all together at the Guggenheim and I got to see it. And I walked in and I felt like she was my sister. Wow, that's really cool. What is her name again? Hilma Off Klimt. Hilma Off Klimt. I'm going to look that up. That's cool. Is there anything else that you'd like to get out there about your work? Anything that's coming up? Any events or anything about yourself you'd like to divulge? <laughs> um, I think the most fun thing I've done this summer was um, Hammered and Hung put on a show at the Edgewater Public Market and a pop-up show. And so I got to be part of that for two months and I sold art. So people are out and about and people are, are I think they're trying to support local artists. It's hard because I can't like teach classes what I used to do for like you know the side gig I'm finding I'm trying to figure out a way to do that online what sets you apart from other artists you know I do a lot of abstract and today I think the trendy art is more anime really I'm interested with digital so that's from some hanging out with some artists around here and they say just try it just try it it's really fun so you're going to be doing some digital art in the future? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the silent auction section of the Denver Art Society, where every month we'll be auctioning off a different piece. This month, we're auctioning off a piece that was actually done by yours truly several years ago. Uh, it's a... A uh, winner's dream. We have two people that are sitting in the cabin that are melding together. It's acrylic on canvas. It's approximately four foot by eight foot long. Um, this particular piece, when I first originally set it out to sale, it was about $2,000. When I brought it here to DOS, because I love everybody here, I did it half price at $1,000. And for our auction, I cut it down to $400 as your starting minimum bid. If you're interested in bidding on this piece this month, you can go to the DenverArtSociety.org website where you should find a link that will allow you to bid on this piece. Perfect. Good. That was good. Yeah? Yeah.